Hey everybody, welcome to Life on Turkey Lane. Uh, my name is Sheila, I'm so glad you're here. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, I'm so glad you're back. Um, I have a special recipe for us tonight and you are not gonna believe this. Um, even I don't know if I believe it, but it's a really simple recipe. So if, if you're a working mom or if you're somebody who's out of time and you don't have a whole lot of time to fix dinner, um, this recipe is going to make your life so much easier. this just recently and I thought okay I've got to try this because um, one of my family members favorite meal is meatloaf and um, so tonight we are going to make a two ingredient meatloaf um, yeah so let's get this party started I, I think you're gonna be surprised at what uh, the second ingredient is. Now we know the first ingredient is gonna be your ground meat. I mean, you can't have meatloaf without meat, right? So, um, but let's take a look and uh, see what we got. Okay guys, so I've got a little bit over a pound of ground beef here. And, um, and yep, you can see it, the second ingredient is stuffing mix. And what a perfect ingredient, I mean, if you think about it. It already has the onions, it already has your celery, it already has your seasonings and spices. Now normally I would use like the original flavor, this is all I had. So tonight we're gonna use the sage flavor, but I think it's gonna be just fine. And uh, yeah, now Normally when I make meatloaf, I would probably also add an egg. So that would technically make it three ingredients. Um, but the one I saw just called for um, the meat and the stuffing mix and just a little bit of water, which is not really considered an ingredient. That is basically free. It's a free thing, just like salt. Um, but we're not even going to really use salt because this has all the seasonings and spices you need. So, super easy. I mean, other than the cook time, this should relatively take five minutes. And so I put my ground beef in the bowl. And now I'm just gonna open my seasoning mix. Now I will tell you, you know, I know I've mentioned in several of my videos lately that I've been eating a, a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet. So obviously this has some breadcrumbs. It's not really a low carb diet thing, but we're, we're gonna go ahead and try it. And I'll probably have Andy give you a taste test tonight. Um, so he's gonna be our guinea pig. <laughs> I'm sure he's gonna love that. Let me see if I can find something to open this package. Here we go. And I don't normally like to get my hands in meat, but I don't really have any rubber gloves either. So I'm gonna get my hands in meat tonight. And basically you're just going to take that and massage it into your meat until it's all mixed up, just like if you were making a regular meatloaf. Just get that all incorporated in there. Let me add just a little bit of water. Tiny bit of water, not even, you know, maybe a half cup or so. And we're gonna massage that in there. And you wanna get all of that massaged into the meat. So, I mean, this is a recipe, there's no chopping. I mean, there's nothing, I, no, like I said, a five minute quick mix up here. Get all that down in there. And 
Now I will be making a topping for my meatloaf, so if you wanna count that as extra ingredients, then you can tell me that I'm a liar and that this isn't a two ingredient meatloaf, but the, the meatloaf is two ingredients. So, but I will be making a traditional uh, ketchup sauce to bake on top of it at the end here. Um, so there we go, we have um, all of that stuffing mix incorporated into our meat. And now we're going to put it in a pan. And I'm going to uh, preheat my oven to 350 degrees. I should have started that before I even started this. And it would be ready to go in there by now. So um, let me get my pan to put this in. And we're going to get this thing in the oven. Okay, so I've got my loaf pan here. It's called meat loaf. So it needs to go in a loaf pan, my opinion. And um, I've got some cooking spray now you don't want to forget this uh, because it will stick to your pan um, I've got I, I did go ahead and turn my oven on over here so it can be preheating I'm just going to spray my pan here all right and we're going to put this meatloaf just right here in our pan and down in there nice and firm Man, I wish I would have thought of this years and years ago because, uh, yeah, like I said, my daughter loves meatloaf. It's her favorite meal. And um, we don't make it often, but uh, this saves a lot of steps. It saves all the seasonings you have to bring out. It saves the chopping of the onion and the celery and whatever else you like to put in yours. And um, quick couple minutes it's in the pan and we're going to get it in the oven okay so our oven is preheated i'm going to get this in there and we're going to let that bake on uh 350 for about an hour so it's about 515 right now at about 615 we're going to check on this and we're going to get that um We'll get the other sauce ready, just the sauce to go on top, ready eh, maybe 10 minutes or so before it's done. So say about six o'clock, we'll come back in here and we'll get the sauce ready to go on top of it. Because um, I don't know about you, but meatloaf is no good if it don't have sauce on it. So uh, we'll come back and do that in just a little bit. Okay, the meatloaf is almost done and we're gonna make our sauce. We've got a two ingredient sauce for our two ingredient meatloaf. So let me show you what we got here and we're gonna get that sauce on our meatloaf and let it finish cooking. And then while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and show you, um, we're just gonna have instant mashed potatoes with our meatloaf tonight. And um, I know a lot of people would think, ah, instant mashed potatoes, nobody loves instant mashed potatoes, they're gross. And yes, a lot of times they are gross. Um, but we're talking about a quick, easy supper here, and I'm going to show you how to make your instant mashed potatoes taste almost like real potatoes and have a really good flavor. So, so I just got a little bit of ketchup here, maybe a quarter of a cup, and I've got a little bit of brown sugar. And we're just going to mix that together until the brown sugar is dissolved. And now let's go over here to the stove and I'm gonna get the meatloaf out and um, and we'll put this on there. Okay, now I've got my pan on the stove with a little bit of water in it for the instant mashed potatoes and I'm letting that get warmed up. And uh, before we spread the sauce on there, I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt in my water here. That's one of the keys. One of the keys to the best instant mashed potatoes is to make sure your water has plenty of salt. Okay, so I'm gonna do probably about a half teaspoon. I know that sounds like a lot, um, but it's not as much as you think. So um, now let's get this meatloaf out of the oven here. Oh yeah, that is just about done. But yeah, it's looking real good. It's smelling real good. 
So I'm just going to take my little baster brush here. And I'm just going to baste my sauce on the top there. So the sauce was just about a quarter of a cup of ketchup and a couple tablespoons of brown sugar. Okay, now we're going to slide this back in the oven and let that uh, sauce kind of get a little sticky on there. I like it sticky. Okay, and while that's finishing up, we're going to start on our mashed potatoes here. Okay, and one of the keys to a really good instant mashed potato is, first of all, like I said, you want to make sure you have plenty of salt in the water. And we're going to go ahead and add some butter. And uh, real butter. You want plenty of real butter. And I'm going to go ahead. Uh, today I've got half and half. Uh, you can use um, heavy cream if you've got that or evaporated milk. But this is one of the keys to making best instant mashed potatoes is to make sure that the cream you use or the milk is a higher fat one and that it's um, rich and thick. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put some butter in my pan here. I keep my butter out and there's a lot there. I keep my butter out on the counter. It don't spoil. It's not going to spoil. Um, but it keeps it soft. So I'm going to go ahead and add quite a bit of butter there while the water is warming up. And then I'm going to go ahead and this hasn't even been opened yet. So if you would like to use instant mashed potatoes, but you always opt against it because, well, instant mashed potatoes taste gross. Um, like I said, here is your secret to making better instant mashed potatoes. Well, if I, I think I'm going to have to have Andy open the, open the milk here. I'll be right back. Okay, so I had to have my strong, handsome man open the yeah. container here. So I'm going to add quite a bit of the half and half to my pan here, and we're gonna have a pretty good sized pan of mashed potatoes, and I don't even eat mashed potatoes anymore, really, so. <laughs> but that's okay. As soon as that comes up to um, a little bit of a simmer, I'll add our potato flakes to it. Okay, so the secret to good instant mashed potatoes, and I've just got the Aldi brand plain old mashed potatoes here, is to use plenty of salt in your water, real butter, and uh, quite a bit of it, and, um, real like cream or half and half or even evaporated milk. Um, regular milk just doesn't cut it. Um, whole milk I guess would do okay, but your better bet is to go ahead and use cream or whatever. Now that this is getting ready to start boiling, we've got a froth here. I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring my, uh, my potato flakes in and I'm just gonna whisk them in. You don't want any lumps, so you gotta start whisking as soon as you pour them in the pan. And keep whisking. And don't worry, we're not done with the butter and the cream. Or the salt, that's just a good base. Okay, now let's get that out of the way. Probably need to get me one of those whisks again that has like the um, like the rubber coating on it when I use with these pans, so it don't scratch them. So anyway, there's our mashed potatoes, and I'm going to go ahead and add more real butter and more real cream, and then we'll taste and see if we need salt. Okay, let me go ahead and get another stick of butter out. I 
can't express enough that I, now back years ago we used to use margarine and uh, that's before I realized just how horrible margarine really is so if you have the opportunity to buy real butter buy real butter um, real butter is made from cow's milk cream and is better for you margarine is made from chemicals and uh, not good for you at all so I'm just gonna add the little bit more cream and the butter here This gives you a little bit of an arm workout. Now I'm really not supposed to eat these, but I'm gonna give them a taste just so I know how much salt is in them and if I've got enough. So let me get a spoon. Okay, let's see. I need a little bit more salt and a little bit more butter. some pepper now. So there is our mashed potatoes, and I know they're good. Now, of course, instant mashed potatoes are never going to taste like real. They're, that's just not happening. But you can get them to taste pretty good. So you can get them to taste pretty good, really. And I wasn't supposed to have that bite, but it was good. So, no regrets there. Um, anyway, I think our meatloaf is pretty much ready. Yep, it's looking ready. So, let's grab that out of the oven. Okay, guys, we're going to let that cool down for just a little bit. And then... Um, the Hubs is going to have a uh, taste test. He's going to share with you what he thinks of this two-ingredient meatloaf with a two-ingredient sauce and these instant mashed potatoes. So I'll be back in a few. Okay, guys, so I'm going to get my Hubs in here. To give this a try um, looks really good delicious in fact um, so yeah let's see what he thinks of this two ingredient meatloaf and these instant mashed potatoes that we've doctored up and um, get an honest review because I know you see a lot of these cooking videos and everybody's like oh yeah this is so good it's so yummy I've, I've created a masterpiece and you never know if they're telling the truth so He's going to tell you the truth. If this sucks, we're going to know it. So this could be a real good win for all of you uh, crazy busy moms um, or people who maybe you're single and you live by yourself and you don't want to take a lot of time to, to do a major cooking, but you like meatloaf. So this may be a choice for you, but um, let's see. Come on over here, hubby dubbies. Yes, hey, it sucks. You're illegal, secretary. That's all you've been doing for the last 20 years. I'm not supposed to say that on TV, right? Oh, yeah. or, you know okay so he's gonna tell you what he thinks i know that he had to have ketchup on it or i wouldn't have. okay it sucks no i mean it don't <laughs> <laughs> it's good okay good i'm trying to catch the part now obviously we know the mashed potatoes would be better if they were real potatoes but um if you put a good amount of salt and cream and butter in them, they're a lot better than. I think it's good. It's it's um. 
It tastes good. It's more now, there was no egg. I didn't use any egg. You saw exactly what I put in there. And it's holding together real good. So, um, it seems to be pretty firm, don't it? Yeah. Yeah. Tastes like meat, though. I mean. So, how about the flavors? Does it have the flavor or is it too... Um, probably have a little more salt for me. A little, little salt? Okay. A little for me. Yeah, I didn't add any salt. You could probably so. have a little more salt. I mean, a little bit. Okay, so there you go, guys. Um, if Good you want to make this two-ingredient meatloaf, just be sure to add a little, sprinkle a little bit of salt in there, and um, you've got you a quick, quick little easy weeknight meal. And um, just two ingredients for the meatloaf and two ingredients for the sauce. So uh, no works. chopping. I mean, you saw I didn't have to get my cutting board out. I didn't have to get the knives out. I didn't have to get 15 ingredients out of the fridge. It was those simple two ingredients, and um, yeah, that was really easy. That's good, and I would say this probably also, that based on the ground ham or the ham we're using is going to have something to do with it also. If you're doing a 70-30 mix versus like a ground chuck, will have something to do with your hammer too. And the, right, and so. yeah, yeah. Um, if, I don't know if you've ever heard the term that fat is flavor. So the fattier your ground beef is, the more flavor it, you're going to get though. out of it. So we normally, I, I can't tell you what this is because we buy, buy various, whatever it depends, is on sale. I think this is like an 80-20. Um, I, I'm not sure. So, um, but that, that's the going standard. Most people buy 80-20 blend. And this one... Everybody likes ground chuck, but I wouldn't go with something that's super, good. super, super lean or you won't have the flavor that you need. And even though this really isn't keto friendly because it has breadcrumbs in it, this girl's going to have some for supper. Anyway, so, thank anyway, you, it's good. Um, I thank you for joining me tonight um, at Life on Turkey you know, Lane. Right. And, um, yeah, I'm going to go eat dinner. Uh, I'm glad you were here. I hope you'll try this recipe. See if your family likes it when you're, it's a spur of the moment kind of night or just whatever. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time, guys. Have a blessed night. Bye. Okay, so I just had to get back on here and share my review of the two ingredient meatloaf. Um, first of all, my piece didn't need any extra salt. It was perfect. This is good stuff, guys, and I'm not just saying that. I wouldn't come back on here just to, you know, toot my own horn because I didn't do anything but mix those two ingredients together. Um, this is really good. I'm impressed. Somebody came up with this idea, and it works. So, um, yeah, guys, try this recipe, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.